What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about lazy properties in Swift, what they are, how to use them, etc. So we're going to start with the playground, go over lazy properties a bit, and then we're going to dive into an actual Xcode project and see why they're useful in the wild, so to say. So with that being said, hit that like button below and let's jump right into it. So let's start as always by starting Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with a blank project, save it wherever you'd like. And let's move this window to the center. Let's also expand this a little bit to give ourselves some more room to work. And let's start talking about lazy properties. So as the name kind of implies, lazy properties are like lazy for some reason, right? And the lazy aspect of a lazy property is the fact that it is not initialized until that property is needed. So you think of a lazy person, they're not going to do something until it's absolutely necessary that they do it. So the reason that that's useful, as you can imagine, is when you instantiate a class, you can have a bunch of properties on it that you might not be using, you being the caller in this case. So lazy properties allow you to keep memory usage of your app super low and efficient. And let's see this in action. So let's say we have a class and let's call it, um, my thing and my thing could have a property on it which is analytics logger and this is going to be a analytics logger now let's create this class also now let's put a function in here called log something and let's also come in here and put a function in here called user tapped button. So what we can actually do is instantiate this my thing. And we have this property available on here called analytics logger. So let's actually come in here and create another function. And we can say log started, log ended, and come down here. So basically, when we create an instance of this my thing class, we are also transitively creating an instance of this analytics logger class because it's a property on this class. So Every time you allocate this into memory, this gets created too. That's cool up until we have a bunch of properties and our memory bearing gets very high. Now, obviously they wouldn't all be analytic loggers. They could be a variety of other classes, but you can see how this might become a problem and not scale very well. So what we can actually do is we can add the lazy keyword in front of a var or a let, so a variable or a constant, and what this actually tells Swift to do is, when you create this class, you're aware that this property exists, but don't actually initialize its, its actual class, whatever it equals, until it's needed. So if I create this instance of my thing down here, and then I say thing.analytics logger dot, let's see, dot log function, I think, right? Log, let's make these public. We're going to do dot log. Hmm, let's see. That was correct to me. For some reason, we can't actually access it. So we have this public. Let's make this class public as well. And let's also make this variable public, even though it should be anyways. Let's make that public. Try this again. So it looks like this is not letting us call the function in here. And I think it's an Xcode bug. Bear with me one second. So this is complaining up here because we have public functions. They're in this class, ah, because we need to remove these parentheses, my little typo. 
Uh, but basically, let's come back down here and uncomment this. There are our two functions. So back to getting into it. So down here, we have an instance of our my thing class. So we're going to say my thing, which is actually a thing, thing.analytics logger, and we're going to call one of these functions. What this has actually done behind the scenes is you're now telling Swift on this thing variable, we want to reference the analytics logger and call its function. So by default, because this wasn't initialized under the hood, Swift now initializes this class. So it's available to actually call this function on. But you can think of a user scenario where maybe we don't call this explicitly and maybe in this user tap the button, we say analytics logger dot log started. But what if the user never taps the button? If we don't use lazy, we're going to create this class every time. But if we use lazy and if the user never taps the button, we never actually bring this into memory, thus keeping our app slimmer in terms of better performance and just making everyone's life that much better. So with that being said, let's actually jump into a real Xcode project and let's start building something that takes advantage of this lazy concept. So we're going to stick with a single view application. Let's call it lazy and save it wherever you'd like. Make sure you hit command R to build and run in a simulator when the project loads. i will save us a little time like so. Let's uh, expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work on both sides. And let's start talking about what we're going to build. So what we're going to actually build is uh, something similar to that user tap the button scenario. So let's head to our view controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to add two buttons on the screen. And when the user taps either of them, we're going to do something with lazy properties. So let's create a function in here called add buttons. As the name implies, it's going to add buttons. Let's call the function here. And let's actually create those buttons. So button one and button two. Let's make sure to add them as subviews. Let's set some background colors. Let's see, let's add a title. Let's add one to the second one as well. And we need to set a frame and let's also set the title color to white so we can see it better on our bright background. And if you're not familiar with buttons, don't sweat it. I've got a video on that too, so take a look at that. But you're, of course, welcome to just follow the code as I type. And lastly, let's set the frame. And we're going to say CG rect. And let's give this an X, Y width and height. So let's say X is 20. Y is 200, width is 250, Y is, I don't know, let's do 400, button 2, and let's hit Command R and we should see buttons on our view. Cool, we got a red button and a blue button. Now when we hit this red button, we want to basically hide, when we, rather when we hit any of these buttons, either of them, we want to hide the buttons. And we want to add a view corresponding to that button to this white view. So if we hit the red one, we want to hide these two buttons and show a red view. And if we hit this uh, blue button, we want to show blue view. So let's uh, create a function. And we're going to say button one tapped. Create one more. Make this button two, and let's add these functions as targets. So we're gonna say at selector button one tapped for touch up inside, and this one's gonna be 
button two tapped. Make sure you make this button two as well. And we're gonna actually move these button properties to the global scope so we can reference them in that function. So we're gonna put them here. And we are going to say button one is hidden is true. Copy and paste this in here. Let's actually add our lazy property now. So this is complaining because we need to prefix both of these functions with add objc for objective C. And if we hit command B, we should be in business now, like so. Now let's actually add those views that we're gonna add, the red one and the blue one. And we're gonna add them as lazy vars. And we're gonna say red view is a UI view. And it's gonna equal basically a view and it's gonna be red. Now what this basically means, the way that this is written out is, we have this red view variable, it's lazy, so don't initialize it until it's called upon, and that equals a UI view, and we could have just done this, but what I chose to do is in this block, we can actually configure that view and return it, and I configured it with a red background color. So let's copy this and make a blue view and do blue there. Now, what we can say in here is print red and blue views are nil. Print those views are still nil, as in they're not initialized. But in here, what we can say is we can say red view dot frame, set a frame for it. And let's actually set the frame as the entire screen to make our lives a little easier. And we can say add sub view on the view in the red view. And let's do the same thing for the blue view. And I think we should be good to go. Looks like we've got an error. Um, let's see, view.frame.bounds. That's what we want, view.bounds, not frame.bounds. And like so, we're in business. So let's hit command R to build and run into our simulator. We'll see here in the actual console, what we get are these two print statements we added. Red and blue views are nil, and those views are still nil. So view did load gets called, and these two variables up here are actually not initialized. The moment we hit this, the red one will get initialized and it will add, add itself to the screen, like so. And maybe this wasn't the best example because now I can't hit the blue uh, button. But let's hit Command R one more time. And let's hit this blue one. And now this blue one shows up. So the example that I wanted to portray here is oftentimes one view might have several sub views. So you can think about um, like a table view cell or a custom UI view. You might not want to show all of those sub views in the parent view. Uh, in other words, you might not want to initialize all those subviews. So lazy is a great way where you can have all of those properties at your disposal if and when you need them. And it's also noteworthy to say that they're not optional. They're not in fact uh, labeled as UI view optional where you would have to unwrap them. They're fully available properties, but they're only initialized once they're needed. Uh, it's a super handy way to stay memory efficient and to build, quite frankly, better Swift apps. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, anything at all, please do leave them below. Always love hearing from you guys. If you haven't done so already, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.